Hello and welcome back. Finally, this is now our last video for basic Cisco device configurations and security. Without further delay, uh, configuring Secure Shell Virtual Terminal Access or SSH in Cisco devices. First, uh, SSH is commonly used for administration of Cisco device because it ensures that the traffic source is secure and encrypted. On the other hand, Telnet were previously used but it does not encrypt the payload that anyone can tap on the line, mm -hmm. sniff the traffic, and reconstruct the Telnet communication, opening a major vulnerability that password can be sniffed as well as other types of confidential sensitive information that traverses a network via Telnet protocol. With the SSH, this issue had been resolved. SSH is basically a telnet but uses encryption algorithms from DES, DES, Data Encryption Standard, to AES 256-bit. To configure an SSH in a Cisco device, first it requires us to generate an RSA key. But the, to generate an RSA key, we have to set a domain name. First, we have to navigate all the way to the global mode. configure terminal to set a domain name use the command ip do, domain domain name say net worker eh.com in generating an rsa certificate you are then have to choose the modulus key size that uh, ranges from 360 to 2048 bits. Note that the larger the key size, the longer it takes to generate and for every encrypted payload has a larger single frame. To generate an RSA key certificate, crypto key generate RSA general keys and then enter. Uh, we have to Yes, because it's the default configuration. And then, let's just use 1024. After generating RSA general keys, SSH B.99 is now enabled. Once enabled, you can now connect to the Cisco device remotely using SSH version 2 protocol which is found in secure CRT and POT. Unlike hardware terminal, you cannot use it since it does not support cryptographic connectivity. And lastly, we are now going to configure the terminal line that only accepts SSH by executing the command transport input SSH. Transport so line dty Zero four. four. Uh, transport input SSH. Enter exit. To verify the SSH configuration, let's configure the another router R2, like what we have done in R1. Network or PH Cisco Control Terminal Oops, County So IP Domain Name Network or PH dot com uh, Crypto Key Generate RSA General Keys Actually, we can do modulus and then 1024. Okay. Then line BTY04. Line BTY04. I think that's wrong. Line BTY04. Uh, transport input SSH. Exit. 
it WR. so let's try to connect from R2 to R1 okay SSH uh, dash L for login and then the username net work okay worker net worker BH 192.168.1.1 IP of R1 enter Cisco now we can connect from R2 to R1 so let's exit let's try to connect from R1 to R2 exit uh, SSH dash L uh, 192 oh, no, no. username network ph 92.168.1.2 okay cisco now we can connect from r1 to r2 this concludes our basic cisco device management and security configuration let's now summarize all the configuration we had done so far and compile it as basic configuration which we will going to use to our future routers and switches basic configurations to begin with first we have to erase all the configuration we had made so far and start from fresh to erase the startup config we will use the right erase and then press enter confirm and then reload and then no confirm like we have to do it in R2 right erase confirm reload confirm okay after reboot and from with initial configuration dialog just type no since we know now how to do the basic configuration manually then we navigate all the way to the global mode no enable mpgt first we do uh, we'll start with the host name r1 uh, enable secret secret uh, service password encryption username uh, network for ph uh, privilege 15 secret cisco and then uh, ip to main name network for ph dot com and crypto can generate RSA general keys modulus 10 for then for banners I had made it in the notepad so we will use we will just copy it for banner MOTD and then paste likewise with the banner login copy paste and another is the no IP domain lookup and then for line line console 0 login local uh, login synchronous and then exec 0 0 so that it will never log off, log you off. Exit. 9. BTY04. Uh, Logging local. Logging synchronous. Exec. 00. And then transport input. SSH only. And then exit and do wr to check the configuration we have do sh run show run 
So we have host name and then the enable secret. Uh, then we have the username, uh, IP domain, IP domain, and then okay, the banner, and then line. Okay, we have to configure the IP for IP address e zero zero IP address one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one slash twenty four no shut down and window okay let's try to do it in the R2 also and no enable to your terminal for R2 uh, I had write all the configuration in a notepad again so host name is R2 then so we'll just copy and then we'll just paste it let's see if uh, oh, let's check first okay and then paste mm. works uh, but we have to configure the in interface oops interface is with us uh, this one two one six eight that one that two slash twenty four no shutdown let me see if the port is up Okay, and then right. Okay, uh, one more time. Let's try the SSH. SSH dash L. Net world. Enter EH Okay. Uh, during login, it only shows the login banner. But once logging, it will also show the message of the day or banner MOTP. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that's all guys. If you need to make some clarifications, please do not hesitate to comment below your questions. And I will do my best to answer it. On my next video, we will be setting up access server before we proceed to the switch catalyst. See you then. Please like my videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.